Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I will be your host for today. Uh, really excited for today's hangout with Inu Sudlovnik joining me from Iqaluit. Today's hangout is in partnership with Students on Ice and is one of many events happening in Canada today to launch Environment and Climate Change Canada's new Ocean Plastics Education Initiative. Along with Students on Ice, Exploring by Seat of Your Pants, is happy to support and promote these resources and to celebrate more Canadian classrooms learning about the ocean and ocean conservation. So Inu will talk a little bit more about this initiative today. And I've also shared links uh, in the description of today's event and I'll also share them with our live classrooms today. So let's meet Inu. She's a master of science student at Atlantic Veterinary College in Prince Edward Island, Canada. She's studying veterinary medicine with a focus on pathology and microbiology of ring seals in Frobisher Bay, Nunavut. Her research combines aspects of Western science with Inuit traditional knowledge through close collaboration with hunters and elders. Inu is also a member of the Students on Ice 2018 Arctic Expedition team. So Inu, it's so great to have you joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, and I know you're joining us from Akalua today, which is great. It's not often that we get to join uh, with someone in further north in Canada. So thank you so much for joining with us today. I know you're gonna share with us a little bit about your research, a little bit about who you are, and of course about the new initiatives that are launching today. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, well, when you're ready, go ahead and share your screen. And when that's done, boys and girls, we're gonna have a Q&A session. We've got a great group of classrooms joining us from different places around Canada today. All right, so hi everybody. Um, as mentioned, my name's Inu. I'm currently in Iqaluit Nunavut, and I'll just share my screen now to show you exactly where we're talking about. I'm sure you guys, um, might have looked into it. But so that's where Iqaluit is. That's where I am right now. And that's where uh, my current research is taking place, which I will get into. Um, so there is Iqaluit. It's the capital of Nunavut, uh, the newest territory to Canada since 1999. Um, so I grew up here um, in Iqaluit but also for the north in Pondolet, which is just right up here on the northern tip of Baffin Island. Um, so that's where I grew up was uh, in these two communities. Uh, I'm just gonna stop sharing for just so I can talk. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so I'm in Iqaluit right now. We have um, a couple inches of snow on the ground today. It's a balmy two degrees. <laughs> um, and uh, so I did all my school here and throughout high school and middle school. Um, I surprisingly wasn't into sciences. Uh, my interest came after when I went to university um, where I got into biology. Um, so even though it may not be too interesting right now, I promise it gets more interesting once you get into um, <laughs> higher education. Um, so let's go back to the share screen here. Um, let's see. Uh, so that's the First slide there, just a little bit about me. I'm from here. Um, I know most of the schools who are, are with us today are from um, Southern Ontario. And I think there's one from, uh, I think it was, it was somewhere in other territories. Um, but on to the next one. Um, so today I'm gonna talk to you about ring seals. They're um, these really cute seals. As you can see, they have rings on, on their body, you see those ring-shaped uh, markings on the seal. Um, so these ring seals are found all over um, the northern hemisphere. So we're talking in Greenland, in Canada, Alaska, Russia. They're just all over the north. 
Um, so they're cold water seals and unlike other seals, which when the ice forms in the winter, they will stay behind where all other seals will go with the open water further south. So in the middle of winter, we're talking December, we're talking January, these seals will still be up here uh, in the ice. And how they do that is they dig with their nails and their teeth through the ice, which can get pretty thick. Uh, we're talking maybe five to eight feet. So they'll maintain holes in the ice uh, throughout the winter. And they're one of the few seals to do this in the Northern Hemisphere. So these seals are very cool because they stay all year round like other seals. And that's very important for um, my research and also for uh, the Inuit who have relied on these seals. Um, so that's a little bit about the ring seal, which is what I'm studying. And um, what else? Okay, let's get to the next one. So why the ring seal? So ring seals, like I said, they're here all year round. And because of that, they're very important for uh, Inuit. So Inuit are all over um, the north as well, or Alaska, Greenland, um, even Russia and northern Canada. So it's important for multiple reasons. And uh, the first one is for food. So just like how you would eat uh, cows or chickens or anything else um, in, in Southern Canada, we eat a lot of seal, um, caribou, uh, fish. So it's very important. Um, and it's still, we still hunt a lot of seal because uh, for lots of reasons, like food is really expensive at the store and um, we need to keep our uh, culture alive. So um, we'll use everything when we catch a seal. As you can see in that picture, um, that's my mom and my sister wearing their seal skin. Um, as you might imagine, it gets very, very cold up here. And uh, parkas made from um, fabrics just aren't warm enough. So we need some very warm clothing. And a lot of that comes from seal skin. So all of that outfit they're wearing right there, it's all seal skin. There's ring seal as well as harp seal. There's a couple different kinds of seal that they're wearing right there. So it's also important for food. As you can see in the picture right there, um, seal is very tasty, believe it or not. <laughs> um, it's very nutritious. It has a lot of nutrients and it's, uh, you don't have to eat that much and you're filled up because it's so nutritious. And usually we'll mix it up with some vegetables because we all know how important vegetables are. We'll have carrots with it, potatoes, and even ketchup. Um, so seal is very <laughs> important for uh, Inuit culture through clothing and hunting practices and food. Um, so that lets you know why the seal is so important. So we talked about uh, the ring seal is here all winter unlike other seals. And we talked about how uh, ring seals are important for the Inuit. So you can kind of start to see why we need to know how the seal is doing because of all how important the seal is up here. So what am I doing uh, with ring seals? I'm trying to make sure that ring seals up here in Iqaluit are safe and they're not sick. Like this poor seal here, you can see that he's sick. Um, it's very hard for a seal to be sick out there. There's, it's, um, it's cold and um, it's just not fun being sick. I'm sure you've all been sick before, it's not fun. 
So let's take an example here. Um, for this one, I used a cow, or you can imagine it to be a cow, a chicken, or even um, some kind of vegetable if you're a vegetarian. Um, just imagine that cow to be anything that you're eating for lunch today or for dinner. Um, so you can see here that there's bacteria or any anything that can make you sick. Like if you're not washing your hands, you can get sick, right? So if all if any of this is getting to the cow, it could also maybe come back to anybody who's eating it, like through a burger, as you can see here. Um, and if there's anything else getting into the cow, like um, like too much um, like mercury, which is um, found in the natural environment, it's found outside. If too much of that is getting into the cow, it can make it sick too. So these two things are what I'm looking at. So these two things, if they get into the cow, they might also get into the burger. So this is the same thing for a seal. If there's any bacteria or anything that's making the seal sick, it might come back to us. If there's any um, heavy metals like mercury getting into the seal, um, it can come back to us as well. So I'm looking for these two things in the seal. Um, and you might be wondering, well, how do you find out if those things are in the seal? Well, so how do I find six seals? Um, Paul, I should have warned the class about um, potentially um, pictures that might be a little bit too much, um, but let's research. <laughs> um, so how do I find six seals? And how I do it is by looking at blood samples. So in the blood, you can find um, these things called antibodies. So antibodies are just like little um, things in the blood, like they're kind of like little soldiers that fight against bacteria or anything that makes you sick. So if these little soldiers or antibodies are present in the blood, then you can then you know that well those little soldiers or antibodies are there for a reason because there's something that's making it sick. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, in the blood samples here. So we take the sample out there and they're in these tubes here. And then you spin it really, really, really fast so that you can all, so all the stuff that's hard and heavy goes to the bottom. And everything on the top, which is this stuff right here um, on the far right, will float to the top. And that top part is what I want. And that's where all the little soldiers are going to be, is in the top. So that's how we find out if the seal is sick or if it has ever been sick, is by looking in the blood. And we're also looking for heavy metals. Um, that's just, again, it's found in the environment. It's, it's out there. It's natural. Um, but if there's too much of it, it can also make the seal sick. So for that, we just take some samples. Um, um, for us, we're looking at a few pieces in the seal, like um, in the blubber, in the meat, and in the liver, because those are where it would um, gather all together. So... That's how we find six seals, and that's how we're looking for other elements like uh, mercury. Um, but because we're doing research in the north, we're also, <laughs> uh, can you say that five times? <laughs> um, we're also looking at uh, indigenous knowledge. Um, and in the north, this is known as Inuit Kaoyumaya Tokangit, which just means uh, things that Inuit know to be true. So this is all 
Well, the part that I'm looking at is for the ring seal. So I'm going out and asking Inuit hunters and elders um, questions about seals. Um, so these can be like, so where do the seals go um, in the spring or where do you find them in the fall? And you need to know the movements of seals and when they give birth to pups and um, what they're eating at certain times of the year. So we're working together with Inuit to find out how healthy the ring seals are. So um, this is very, very valuable information and it we're finding it works very, very well with um, any science. So hopefully in the future, science will work more with Indigenous people to do science in uh, hopefully all over Canada. Um, so that's Inuit Kauyi Maya Tokangi. Yeah, it's very, it's very hard to say. <laughs> um, for short form, we just call it IQ. So just IQ. Um, and so science in the north. I'm sure you're all curious what it's like to be up here in Nunavut or in the Arctic. And um, we have huge fluctuations. Um, as you can see here uh, on the left, that's the ocean. And it completely freezes over for um, half the year. And then it's open in the summer with some ice around. Um, but science in the north or even just science is not always in a, cl in a classroom or in a lab. Um, a lot of my friends, when they're doing science, they're out there, they could be snorkeling in the coral or walking through a forest looking for ticks. So science can look very different. Your classroom can be anywhere. So science in the North, our classroom looks like this. So you see we're on boats and we're out there looking for seals. We're keeping being an eye out for sick seals or anything strange and behavior. And in the winter and spring, we're out on the ice. We're on snowmobile uh, with our kamutik or sled. And we're looking for seals and any signs of sick seals. So your classroom for science can look very, very different. Um, and this is just what it looks like here in the north. So if you want to find out more, I know seal hunting is kind of a strange topic sometimes and we don't really know um, all the all the information that we're getting. So um, I recommend watching this movie, uh, it's an award winning movie called Angry Inuk that talks about how seal hunting in the north is different than in say Newfoundland and this, this website here is uh, Nunavut sealing and that will just talk about um, how the seal is used and how important it is um, in our traditional and modern economy. So that was my quick, um, I'm gonna close that, um, presentation. I'm just trying to find out how to stop screen share, but uh, okay. I think I stopped. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right, well, Inu, thank you so right, much well, you uh, for sharing that with us. That. that was great. It looks like we're doing some exciting research uh, up there in the Arctic. And uh, thank you so much for the short form as well, the IQ. That's gonna make it much easier for us to share that <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you're up for it, are you ready to meet some classrooms? Yes, for sure. All right. Perfect. Well, let's jump to our first classroom here. Let us go to Bradford, Ontario. We have a grade six, seven class with Mrs. Diesel. Let me turn their microphone on. Hi. How are we doing, boys and girls? All right. Who's got a question? Um, I 
want to ask um, how much people does it take to find out if a seal is sick or not? So how many people? Um, yeah, okay. Um, so usually the hunter will be able to tell if it's sick, like it's smaller or it's skinnier. So usually the hunter can tell right away. So in that case, it's one person. But for our research, we're talking maybe at least three people to tell if it's sick because they look at different parts of the seal. So I guess between one and three people will be able to tell us if it's sick. Thanks for your question. <laughs> so, you know, just to build on that question a little bit, um, when you're getting your samples, do they all come from uh, seals who have maybe died from natural causes or maybe um, from hunters? Or do you sometimes uh, catch them in the wild and take samples and release them? Yeah, um, so all of my samples have come from hunters who are going to eat them. So all of the seals are going to be um, consumed by people or by dog teams. because We have a lot of dog teams here. Um, so usually if there's a seal found out there that's already been dead, let's say by a polar bear, then the parts that I need to sample are already gone, so I can't sample it. Um, so it's always seals coming from hunters. All right. Well, let's meet another classroom now. Let us go. Let's see. Uh, well, I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Mercer's class. They're grade seven and eights joining us in Sarnia and their microphone isn't working today, but they're going to send us some questions in via the blue chat sidebar. So Mrs. Mercer, just a reminder to send us in those questions and we'll choose some of them. But for now, let us go uh, to Mrs. Reeb's class. Uh, they're joining us in Leamington, Ontario, grade three, four. So let me turn their microphone on. Say your name. Hi, my name is Sal. Um, what other animals live in the Arctic? All right. Hi, Sal. Thanks for the question. <laughs> um, so we have quite a lot of other animals. So just yesterday, there were some narwhal, um, not that far from town. Um, there was a, f I saw a few polar bears just last week. And we even have beluga. We have lots of different kind of birds. There was some walrus yesterday. Um, so there's quite a few, a lot of them are in the water. All right, and for the boys and girls who might not be sure what a narwhal is, I highly suggest you look it up uh, after the hangout. So it looks very much like the body of a whale with this long projection, it looks like a unicorn's horn, which is actually a tooth. So I highly suggest you check out uh, a picture or maybe a video online, because they're quite, quite unique looking. <laughs> All right, let's jump. Uh, Mrs. Larmer's class is joining us in North Bay, grade five, six class. Mrs. Larmer, if you don't mind turning on your microphone, uh, boys and girls say hi, and then let's get a question. Oh, we hear you now. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Emu, my, my son was on the Students on Ice expedition with you. Oh, his name, that's... His name uh, who is your son? His name's Makai Larmer, and he had red hair. And he oh, he was, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. He was hilarious. So he, uh, he spoke very highly of you, so we're excited to chat with you. But we have a question. Annie, come on up. Um... Why are the ring seals so special? Why do they only eat those? So she wants to know why you're just studying the ring seal and, and why you chose that. Yeah. Uh, so the ring seal um, is the only seal that will stay here when the ice is really, really thick. So all the other seals will go further south where there's no ice. And so we're here with lots of ice. And the ring seal is the only one that stays when there's lots of ice. Thank you. Okay. All right. And you can definitely see how important they are when you shared the food with us. 
and then uh, the clothing that you're wearing that was made of the seal. So I can definitely see why they're very important, uh, not only for um, survival, but just an important part of the culture too. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're gonna jump to a new classroom. We're gonna go to Mrs. Whittle's class. There's some grade five sixes joining us in North Spirit Lake. That's Let me turn on their microphone so they can say hi. Oh, they did it for me already, go ahead. Oh, off again. Oh, can you hear us okay? We got you now. How's everyone doing? Good. Yeah. 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 And where are we from? Yeah. North Spirit Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. How do you guys have a seal? Did you hear that one? I'll try one more time for us. How do you guys cook a seal? seal. How do you cook a seal? What's your favorite way to cook a seal? Um, um, so my favorite way to cook a seal is by boiling it and then having a little bit of ketchup on the side. It's very tasty. Of course, and carrots. You got to have carrots on the side. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> Hmm. All right, good to know. So before we jump to another classroom, I'm just curious about uh, your research so far. Are you finding that the levels of heavy metals are increasing in seals, in the samples you're taking? Um, so far, um, actually, I'm doing a baseline study, so there's no records in my area that have um, looked into it. So not... We can't compare it yet. <laughs> All right. No, that's perfect. So you're doing the initial research, and then a few years from now, maybe yourself or another scientist, maybe even a student in one of our classrooms can now compare that knowledge. So that's very important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Who can we visit now? Let us go to Mrs. Hinnigan's grade eights joining us in Mississauga. If you actually, I can control your mic, it's just on my screen. How are we doing, everybody? Good. We're grade one, two, and three, though. All right. That sneak change on me. That's okay. I'm glad you're hanging out with us today. Okay, What is a ring seal's lifespan? Um, a ring seal's lifespan. They can live up to about, um, I think it's 25 years. Uh, so they can get very big. <laughs> All right, so 25 years, great question. Um, who do? We, oh, here we go. Let's visit Mrs. Basie's class, grade fives joining us in Bolton. And you're just off my screen, so if you don't mind turning on the microphone for me, you can say hi, and we'd love a question. Yay. Okay, hi. hi. Okay. Hi, my name is Juliana, and I want to know what is the ring seal's diet? All right, Juliana, thanks for the question. <laughs> so, ring seals, they'll eat a lot of little things in the water, like uh, little tiny shrimp, and they'll eat uh, little fish. Um, that's pretty much it. It's, it's a lot of little, little stuff, like little shrimp and little fish. All right, mm -hmm. great question. And then I do have a question that came in from our class joining us, uh, Mrs. Mercer's class. They're wondering, um, oh, there, here's a two-part question. Um, they're wondering, uh, is it possible to be a vegetarian in the north? Because obviously something like seal and other meat that you get from the water is very important. So they're wondering if it's possible to be a vegetarian, but they're also wondering if you've ever fallen into the water while doing your research. <laughs> Those are both very good questions. <laughs> um, so there are quite a few vegetarians in the north, for sure. Um, mostly in Iqaluit, the capital city, because um, we have a lot more produce coming in, a lot of more fruits and vegetables. Uh, further, further up north, like Resolute or Pond, it's a little bit harder to be a vegetarian, but it's definitely possible. And for the second question, have I ever fallen in the water while doing my research? 
Um, so far, I have not fallen in the water doing my research, but for other things, I have fallen in the water. <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> hmm. All right. Great questions. Uh, so we're going to swing back. We're going to visit our classrooms again and see if they have a follow-up question for us. But um, I'm wondering about uh, your studies. What made you choose Prince Edward Island as a place to study? Yeah, uh, so Prince Edward Island, I moved there because of the professor there, uh, my supervisor, Pierre-Yves Daou. Uh, he, does, he does work in the Arctic with seals, and he's one of the few scientists that does. So I just went there for the professor. All right. Well, let's take a swing back through some of our classrooms. Let's start with Mrs. Diesel's class and see if they have another question for us. I'll turn your microphone on and we're ready. Hey, uh, sorry, we were just playing because we lost sound for a minute. So we're just give us a second. Okay, girls. Okay, go right in front. Hey there. <laughs> yep, go ahead. What made you do what made you do what you do? So what made me do what I do? Is that the question? What? Yeah, okay. Um so um I didn't really know what I wanted to do until maybe a couple years after high school. So um, I did some, my first, very first summer job after first year university was working with birds. So I was on an island with thousands and thousands of birds. And I was like, wow, birds are awesome. And there were also lots of seals in the water. Um, so I thought it would be really fun to work with seals. And because they're so important, like, I am eating seals. I want to know if they're healthy too. So um, there was a couple reasons that I chose the seals. <laughs> okay, and we'll take a moment here. I want to give a quick shout out to Mrs. Beckett's class in Paris, Ontario. They sent a message uh, online and they're saying, hey, from Paris, Ontario. But then they're also wondering if ring seals are friendly. So maybe more like, do they let you get close or do they, do they kind of get away quickly when they see humans. Yeah, so ring seals are very curious. So you can just be having lunch on the boat and you turn off your engines, you're sitting there eating. They'll just come up and they'll come up pretty close and they'll try to see what you are. So they're very curious. <laughs> That's for the younger ones, but the older ones, they don't like humans so much. They just stay away. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for that question online. Uh, Mrs. Whittle's group. Oh, I got it right now. Okay, we've got a question for you. Come on. How do you hunt them down? How do you hunt them down? Did you hear that? How do you, how do you hunt them? Yes. All right. Good question. Yeah, um, so it depends on the time of year. Um, so let's start with summer and fall you're on a boat um, and it has to be a calm day on the water. You can't be um, too bumpy because then you won't be able to um, shoot very well. So it's always, they always shoot the seal. There's no clubbing here. Um, so from the boat you shoot and in the winter, um, they have these really tiny holes in the ice that you find. They're kind of like a little uh, volcano shape. So you can do a very traditional style and you can wait over the hole and wait for the seal to come up and breathe and then you'll harpoon it. Um, or in the springtime, and this is only in the spring, they'll come up onto the ice and they'll, um, they're will they losing their, their fur. So they'll come up onto the ice on sunny days and from there you can um, snowmobile and then you can walk a little bit because um, they're very skittish and then you can um, shoot from there. So there's three different ways. <laughs> okay, so now it's it, the rifle's the way uh, that most hunting's done? Yes, yeah, for sure. All right, good question, thank you so much. We'll jump back to Mrs. Hennigan's group and see if they have another question. I see someone at the camera. 
Um, I have one question. How big can uh, any type of seal get? Okay. So, um, well, let's start with the ring seal. The ring seal does not get very big. So maybe they'll get about uh, four feet long, but any seal, um, the, I think the, the one of the bigger seals is uh, the elephant seal and they get very big. Like they're very, very large as you can tell from the name. <laughs> I don't exactly know how long they are, but I think they're at least uh, six feet long and they're very heavy. Thanks for your question. All right, that's a great question. Uh, elephant seals are another one that you have to look up if you haven't seen an elephant seal before, because you're right, the males especially get to be huge, weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and they have this crazy little snout, and you'll see right away why they get their name. Really cool mm -hmm. seals. Uh, Mrs. Reeves class, your microphone is on again, if you guys have another question. Hi, my name's, Hi, my name's Cameron. And what can we do to make the the any kind of seal from stopping getting sick? Thanks, Cameron, for that question. Um, we can to help uh, from we prevent seals getting sick. We can pollute a lot less. Say if they're eating plastics by accident, that can make them sick. Or if we're um, polluting, like using your car to. Um, just drive around or do anything, you can maybe use your car less and that prevents all the pollution from going in the air and that ends up in the water and that's how animals can get sick. Um, so just, I guess, don't litter and try to pollute less, I guess. <laughs> all right, some great advice. And you know, it's amazing. We don't often think especially in places like Ontario where we're so landlocked that what we do can have an impact. But unfortunately, water systems are connected, pollutants can get up in the air, and they do end up in the north. So what we do here can definitely have an impact uh, further north in Canada. So that's a really important message. Uh, Mrs. Basie's class, do you mind turning your microphone on again if you have another question? And then go ahead. Um, hello, um, my name is Bowie and I was just wondering, are there any um, diseases that are like exclusive to none of it that can harm seals? Or is it just like kind of general things that can happen? Right, awesome question Bowie, that was a really good question. Um, so there's no diseases that we know of yet that are just exclusive to Nunavut. So um, the diseases that we're finding can be present um, anywhere. Um, so yeah, they can be found anywhere. All right, that was a great question. And uh, yeah, you know, I think that's a really uh, good point to bring up as well, is you think some are so cold, you don't often think of uh, bacteria and other things, but there's some very hardy bacteria that can survive pretty much anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. All right, great question. Um, Mrs. Larmer's class, if you would like to turn your microphone on for me, we'd love one more question. There you go, we're off. Um, hi, my name's Arya. What's the most interesting thing you found in a seal's bloodstream? All right, awesome question, Arya. Um, so, so far I've only been collecting um, Blood. I haven't started looking at it yet. So unfortunately, I can't answer that question yet. I can next year or in six months. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I think that's what's really exciting is a lot of times you hear that there's nothing left to explore or discover, and that couldn't be further from the truth. There's so many awesome careers in science, uh, using technology. There's so many different ecosystems and animals we haven't studied yet. So there's lots of really awesome opportunities for all the boys and girls out there to join in um, and do some really exciting research. So I think what you're doing is really exciting. You get to be the first to kind of lay down this knowledge. That's really exciting. Yeah. All right, so I think we visited each classroom twice uh, online. No more other questions have come in yet, but there is someone named Joshua 
Komangapik, I hope I pronounced that okay. And he wants me to tell you that you're the best Inu. So <laughs> thanks, Josh. <laughs> I thought I would share that. Oh, and I do have a question from uh, Mrs. Mercer's class. They just sent one um, to me online. And so question that they have is, do you study any animals besides the ring seal? Um, and if not, do you know other people who are studying other animals in the Arctic? Okay, thanks for the question. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of people studying a lot of different things. Um, that can be from fish to narwhal to sea ice to plants to, um, it's everything. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of different research. It's really interesting to find out who is doing what research. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of research going on up here. All right. Well, you know, it's been a blast hanging out with you today, but before we do uh, sign off for today, I was just wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about um, the materials that are being uh, released today from the environment and Climate Change Canada, the new Ocean Plastics Education Initiative. Yeah, um, actually, I don't know that much about it, but I think you might know more than I do in this topic. Oh. Um, Perfect, well, I can share a little bit with the classrooms. So the new initiative was launched today, um, and you can find the education resources online at www.plasticsedkit dot ocean dot org so i will post that uh to the teachers who are joining us live and i will also uh it's also posted in the link uh the live description of the event so anybody who's watching live uh can find that as well so it's an exciting day today because it is the launch of environment and climate change canada's uh, new ocean plastic education initiative and this is just one event uh, of many taking place today uh, to launch these new resources so do check them out We'll post them in our next newsletter as well, so more classrooms get a chance to see them. And also, swing by Students on Ice, because you can find some great information there, especially about some of their expeditions. And also, for some more educational resources, check out the Canada C3 website. So those who don't know, that was a 150-day journey, coast to coast to coast, starting in the East Coast and making its way, or sorry, in Toronto, and making its way all the way around uh, back to British Columbia. So it was an absolutely incredible journey full of amazing science, um, interactions uh, on the ship, learning about indigenous culture. It really was an incredible journey and there's tons of cool resources that you can find there. But Inu, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Your research sounds exciting and I know that there's gonna be classrooms out there looking forward to hearing about uh, what you find when you start doing some of those tests. All right, thanks for having me. It was nice to meet all the classrooms and thanks for all the great, great questions. Um, and have a good school year, guys. All right, let me turn the microphones on so the classrooms can say goodbye and thank you. And then we will sign off. Today, enjoy the rest of the week. We'll see you again soon.